This is Field Sports Channel News. Social media loving celeb Chris Packham has scored an own goal with a tweet. After watching the Field Sports Channel film about new pro hunting group Hunting Kind and its plan to establish legal precedent for hunting folk as an identifiable cultural minority, the BBC TV presenter tweeted that he would call that group barbaric savages. Unfortunately for Packham, by doing that, he may have set the legal precedent that hunting needs, according to a top barrister. Hunting Kind obtained legal opinion which says that people who hunt could have protected characteristics under the 2010 Equality Act and that they must establish cases of discrimination against them, which Packham has provided. The Countryside Alliance tried to establish this under European law, but before the 2010 laws, which now make it impossible. Hunting Kind's opinion backs up the words of Daniel Greenberg, the lawyer who drafted Tony Blair's hunting ban, who revealed in a speech to the Surtees Society that he regrets legislating against a minority on a moral issue. I've spent three years writing a submission, uh, getting it peer reviewed and getting it put in front of uh, leading council human rights Silk, who sits on the Council of the European Court of Human Rights. And he unequivocally, the good news, the, the, the round of applause, don't, is <laughs> that the outcome of that from the human rights Silk is that as a protected minority group under the Equality Act, we qualify undoubtedly 10 out of 10. For the full chat on stage, click on the link below. Britain's Olympic silver medalist Amber Rutter says the rules have to change so others don't suffer like she has in Paris. Amber won a silver in skeet in a shoot-off with Chile's Francesca Corvetta Chadid. With the scores level, she was denied the chance of a gold medal after the referee said she'd missed one of the clays. Footage clearly shows she clipped the target, as you can see from this still taken from a video of the playoff. There's a large orange segment that broke off the first clay. It shows that her shot hit it and the referee has made a mistake. Despite appealing for a referee to reverse the decision and allow the shot, it registered as a miss. Chadid then hit both of her remaining clays to claim the Olympic title. I would bet a lot of money that I hit that target, but that's the name of the game. That is sport for you. It doesn't always work in your favour, but Hopefully they will bring back this VAR system because I do think it's so important in a sport like shooting because they are so quick. They're moving like they're so small in the sky and like even just a little chip. We just want a fair playing field out there. And I know that it was the exact same for some of the other girls in the final as well. So I think it's just something that should definitely be looked for people back. Peter Wilson, who won Olympic shooting gold for Team GB in 2012, says it's time for shooting to follow the lead set in other sports. Wilson is one of the most successful shooters in the modern era and took gold in double trap in London. He says while Amber's achievement in winning silver in Paris is phenomenal, she was robbed of the chance of winning a gold because of the mistake. Really need is a bit like in cricket, a third umpire. So if the referees aren't entirely sure, they can go back to the third umpire who can show them within seconds whether that was a kill or a miss. So it isn't necessarily down to the athlete. The athlete can protest it, which is quite within their rights, as Amber did. And if the ref then isn't entirely sure, neither are the side referees, which happens, as I said before, quite regularly, they can go to the third umpire. And in a moment like that, where it's for an Olympic gold medal, you know, this isn't to get into a final. This isn't for a, you know, a fourth, fifth place, a third place. This is an Olympic gold medal. They go to the third umpire, they confirm that she hit the pair, and then they move on. It's just the right way to do it. That's, that's my view. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see it, because this has just been such a shambles. With the glorious 12th just around the corner, the predicted poor grouse season could be down to rain and governments. Part of the blame for lower numbers of birds is bad weather in early spring. Other factors include a reduction in keepering and moorland management following new legislation, including the introduction of the Wildlife and Muirburn Bill in Scotland. Basque says they and others are continuing to work on conservation projects despite the lower numbers of birds. Regardless of these low numbers, conservation work still continues. And this is a testament to the dedication of the gamekeepers, land managers, moor owners alike. Meanwhile, the first big wildfire of the summer has struck in West Yorkshire. Firefighters have spent several days trying to prevent the fire at Meltham from spreading. They blame the blaze on a discarded disposable barbecue left unattended. 
Whilst most crews have left after several days fighting the flames, one crew remains in attendance in case of flare-ups. Basque has introduced its fourth deer stalking scheme. It'll teach members how to hunt roe, fallow, muntjac and Chinese water deer in the east of England. Basque already has similar schemes based in Scotland, Northern Ireland and Hampshire. You can find out more by clicking on the link below. Thousands of children have grabbed the opportunity of clay pigeon shooting at a flagship scouting event in the south of England. Scouts and guides aged from 11 to 18 queued all day, every day, to get a lesson with Basque accredited shotgun coaches on the shooting line at the Essex International Jamboree. Basque says it plans to build on this success with more events and more Basque instructors. The, the long-term aim is that we want to get as many instructors and coaches in the coaching movement so that they can deliver these activities for themselves in their own right with qualified people. In the Netherlands, a local government has warned parents not to go into the woods with their children amid fears of a wolf attack. The warning comes from the province of Utrecht, where officials report there have been two recent close encounters with wolves displaying worrying behaviour. One is believed to approach the child and pushed it over. Officials believe the same animal also approached a young girl walking her dog. The province has applied for permission to the Dutch Agricultural Ministry for a special permit to kill the predators. Wolves remain a protected species and cannot be shot without one. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts.